and welcome to Books and Shit. So I read an article on NPR the other day. Big shocker, the book nerd is familiar with NPR. And they were talking about something called Book Girls. Book Girls is this sort of concept of the whole demographic of especially young adults to probably around starting about college age teenagers basically reading and uh, at first glance your, your thought is oh thank god teenagers are reading okay that's that's a good thing and then there's a second part of your brain that kicks in and goes well what are they reading and that sort of got me thinking about there's always been a problem in the literary community with the debate about what people should be reading that because you're reading, you should be reading a specific group of authors. This is a very easy thing to catch up on. All you have to do is type in top 10 books. You'll find lists and lists and lists because if the internet loves anything, it's giving people to-do lists. And so what you'll find is, you'll find that everybody has already decided what are the books that everyone should have read at some point in their life. You know, Time Magazine has the Time Top 100 books, you know, with and they've got all the predictable people on there. There's Hemingway, there's Faulkner, there's Joyce, and it goes on and on. There's some obscure people you probably never even heard of. The point is that there are just gallons and gallons of bullshit being thrown around about what constitutes worthiness in the literary world. And this is a huge problem because it dictates the value of something without taking into consideration the value of the act. The literary community can be kind of stuck up about what constitutes a good book. Now, I'm going to start off with a very interesting proposition. The fact that somebody read Twilight is a good thing. Why is that a good thing? It's not because it's a good book, okay? It's good because someone's reading. Instead of going to the television and just turning off their brain and absorbing a bunch of flashing images, a person sat down and took the time to use their imagination. This is something that's becoming less prevalent in our society. It's just a simple fact. So much of our entertainment is non-interactive. Even video games, to a certain extent, don't really require a great deal of gray matter involvement. I mean, you have to have reaction time. It's more about reflexes than, than cognitive process. You know, there are games that are specifically designed for puzzle solving, but most of them are just run and shoot as fast as you can. Jump off the ledge, steer the car. It doesn't really require you to be as involved in the material as you would say a murder mystery. So, like an Agatha Christie novel requires you to be somewhat engaged in what's going on. Keep track of the characters and who's doing what. When you're racing a car through the streets of downtown Tokyo, drifting all over the place, it doesn't really matter. You know, all you have to know is which buttons to press and you just Tokyo drift and just murder spray your way through whatever the fuck you're supposed to be doing. So, the point is that everything is just given to you the events, the, the plot, the action, it all comes across directly. You have nothing to do with what you're involved with. But with a book, you have to sit down and you have to create the reality that you're involving yourself in. Also, this is a conscious choice, okay? So many of us have, at this point, grown up with television in our lives. It's ubiquitous. It's a part of who you are. When you move to a new apartment, if you don't have a television, it's one of the first things your friends will point out. I'm not saying go out and be some pretentious fuck like, I have no TV. TV has a value. It allows you to turn your brain off. But what I'm saying is that people that read books are taking the moment to turn it back on. So it is a good thing when somebody goes out and at least is reading. So... What I'm getting at is, even though Twilight may not be the best book to read, at least somebody went out and took the time to read it. No one starts out reading high-quality fiction. In addition, there's a certain point where quality transmogrifies into pretension, where you are no longer reading the book for 
the material in it, you're reading it in order to say, I made it to the top of the mountain. Ulysses is a lot like that. That book is fucking complicated for no other reason than to be complicated. The story in it is very simple. A guy wakes up one day, he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life, he feels like he's wasting it, but at the same time has the whole existential drama of there is no point to reality. Meanwhile, there's another guy wandering around town who wants to bang hot young chicks, who doesn't, but he's got a wife at home who thinks he's kind of a loser. Alright, okay, we've all heard these stories before. They go out, they get drunk, it's an Irish novel, of course they're going to do that, and that's it. Boom. That's the whole story. It's told over the course of like 700 pages of highly complicated language. And the purpose of the novel was to be hard. It's belletristic. Look it up. See, the point here is that quality is a subjective concept. And most of the time, what people refer to as quality is really more of a merit badge for their own pretentious sensibility. It feeds their ego and distances them from the rest of society in a way that feels good but is not good. You start reading books to enjoy them. The concept is entertainment. The idea is an escape from reality, but it's fun. You, you want to read it because you're invested in these other realities and you get to enjoy the adventure. But as time goes by, there's always a risk that your sense of what makes something good is really you justifying why you're reading something that is excessively complicated for no other reason than the fact it can be. I'm not trying to shit on Joyce, but what I'm saying is he's not for everybody, nor should he be recommended as if he were. People should be encouraged to read things because they can have fun. People should be encouraged to read things because they can get some satisfaction out of them. The idea that something is only good because it appeals to some highfalutin academic sense of quality is ridiculous. Some people enjoy Tom Clancy, Dan Brown, Patterson. Patterson. But the thing is, you shouldn't shit on those people. Okay? You should accept the fact that that's what they enjoy and move on with yourself. What happens when you start dictating what everybody else is supposed to enjoy is all you're doing is making one taste available. You know, uh, <laughs> think about it like this. You go into an ice cream parlor and you pick out your favorite flavor and you're enjoying it. And then some guy walks over to you and goes, you really should have picked the mint chocolate chip. If you had any taste, that's what you would have gone with. And then just walks away. That's essentially what it is. It's somebody shitting on you for enjoying yourself. It's a very specific kind of person that's a reader in general, a person who habitually goes back to print fiction or digital as times have evolved. The thing is, that tends to be a very specific kind of mentality. You have to be able to sit down and focus on a slow input of information. It doesn't matter how fast you read, it's still going to take you a long time to get through a book. The point is that it requires patience, focus, and a certain level of determination. This is a very specific kind of person. It is a person who most likely got the shit beat out of them a lot in school. And there's sort of probably in the back of their subconscious a little bit of the search for that which makes them better than others. That's one dynamic. The other dynamic is that, let's be honest, it's fun to judge other people. It's kind of fun to look down your nose at a different group, especially when you feel like you have an incredibly valid argument for it. There is something about bonding over, like, the discussion of what makes other things wrong and terrible. Everybody does it at some point. Even the most open-minded, kind-hearted, optimistic soul will at some point talk to their friends about what they don't like about something. We, we have this innate desire to express why we don't want something. It's 
essentially you could you call it whatever you want statement of preference uh, you could call it differentiation from the herd you know the communal bonding by creating the other it doesn't matter the fact is there's something hardwired in our brains that makes us want to point out why somebody else is wrong or different from us and one of the ways to do that is to criticize their entertainment because it's one of the things that people are usually very open about because most people don't expect someone to just fly shit bomb right past them, you know? You could be walking down the street and you'll see someone with a t-shirt and it has a band on it and your first thought is whether or not you like that band and if you don't like that band you don't like that person all of a sudden and you have a whole series of preconceived notions about why that person's an asshole for liking such and whatnot. Does that make you a bad person? Maybe, but I'm not going to judge you for that. I'm going to judge you for reading the wrong kind of book. In situations like this, it's always important to bring up the extreme example. Okay? Is it better to read Fifty Shades of Grey or not read at all? Now, I guess the point I'm trying to make so far is that a lot of times when you start telling people what they should be reading, you're just increasing that sense that reading is this snobby, pretentious field of book people. You know, the specific term book people. And that it's not for everyone. You basically, you're discouraging others when you discredit the quality of what they're enjoying. You're telling them that they, they don't know what's good. When you should really be encouraging them, like, oh, did you like that? Well, you know what else is good? That's the way you should really bring it up. You shouldn't bring it up like, oh, you're an awful fucking moron for reading this. You should really be reading that. Say, oh, you enjoyed that? Well, you know what? Maybe you should check out this. Because here's the thing. Reading is a dying skill. I mean, people still have to read in order to order off the value menu at McDonald's, but they, uh... They don't feel the necessity for it in other aspects. Just just think for a second. Most articles on the internet you'll find are accompanied with a video. The article itself is then just a summary of everything that happens in the video. So there's no reason to read the article in the first place. The video fills in all the details. In addition, other websites have begun experimenting with things like little headers at the top that say, this article will only take you one minute to read, as if how long it takes you to read it is what's important. We should be encouraging people to exercise this skill more often, and hopefully we can get into a habit of kindly encouraging them to higher pursuits. You know, not everybody is going to be able to enjoy Faulkner. I don't. I'll go out on that limb, that treacherous limb. But the thing is, we should encourage people to enjoy what they're doing in the hope that it gets them to do it more. Because we are turning into this society of people that just absorb information instead of process it. Encourage people to read!